So the first thing that we're going to do is look at maybe of a more proletarian approach. And we're going to look at resources as means of the firm. So one of the first things you got to do is understanding, or if you, you know, step by step process of understanding the means of the firm that you have. First of all, of course, you have to inventory and assess the various resources and capabilities that you already have in the firm. Then try to understand their fit within your given industry's key success factors and the strategic orientations of the firm. And if there's any discrepancy between the resources and capabilities that you have inside the firm and their fit with what is external to the firm, you identify those gaps and then you try to fill them typically by acquiring more resources. So some different kind of resources that we have. The first is tangible resources. Tangible resources are typically known as financial or physical resources, things that you can actually touch or, and financial, of course, in theory, you can touch the money, right? And then physical resources, plants, equipment, anything that the firm actually owns. Very easy to identify and evaluate. Normally they have, um, they can be identified and valued within financial statements. Um, however, you remember, there's all sorts of crazy ways to appraise the value of things. Um, amortization, you know, depreciation, all these kinds of things. So just be careful when it comes to the value. But at least in theory, you can get a concrete value of a tangible asset. Now, you have to ask yourself, can the assets that you have actually contribute to the creation of a sustained competitive advantage? So our physical resources depends on where those uh, resources are located, like geographically, where is that store located, where is that plant located. Is there, uh, tell me about the technical sophistication. Is this an up-to-date factory, an up-to-date piece of software, or not? How old is it? Is it falling apart? I know um, they're working in different universities. We certainly have all sorts of resources, printers in particular, that are always falling apart, and so they, basically they're worthless. In terms of flexibility, can the items or objects that you have be used for other kinds of tasks? For example, can that printer also be used as a copier? Can the, power, can the manufacturing plant that makes, I don't know, hot dogs also be used for making frozen hamburgers? And then how is that um, equipment appropriated? Um, is it used 24-7? You know, is it only used once a week so that you can be you know, appropriated for other uses during the week, etc. Now financial resources, of course those of you that are finance majors would probably get more of a kick out of this. You have to look at the level of indebtedness and free cash flow, flow, flow to determine uh, growth potential, things like cost of capital. Okay. And of course you also have to look at the operating profit and, uh, with regards to uh, a percent of sales and that could also be considered a good measure of competitive strength. So with regards to intangible resources, those are things like the reputation uh, and also things that are pertaining to technology like patents, recipes, know-how. Intangible resources are normally invisible and they are implicit. And that's one of the reasons that there's normally a difference between market value and book value. Okay? It's usually the intangible resources that make up that difference. So things like brands are a good example of intangible resources, product reputation, we talked about that in the last module. And that can have a large, and that can be you know, potentially very valuable. Look at Coca-Cola brand. Okay? Their, their brand is very valuable. And that reflects the price premium that consumers are willing to pay. Think about differentiation. Company reputation is also very valuable, especially with regards to all the different stakeholders of a company. And patents can, of course, be assigned a discrete financial value, but know-how is almost impossible to value. We also have human resources. And human resources are the productive services that people offer to the firm in terms of their skills, knowledge, and decision-making abilities. Now that's a little different than know-how because you can actually evaluate human resources. This person has an MBA, this person has a degree in engineering, this person has these certifications. Nonetheless, they can still be difficult to appraise. Some indicators of human resources, again, as I mentioned, qualifications like a degree or a certification, number of years they've worked in a firm, what their salary level is, uh, what the age pyramid is like in the firm. Social climate and employee morale can also be indicative of the level of human resources, and so can employee turnover. Now, there's a variety of ways that we can appraise these uh, 
resources. And let me kind of give some examples of tangible and intangible human resources, and then I'll talk about their characteristics and some indicators of the uh, existence or availability of these resources. So if you want to talk about financial resources on the tangible side, and I didn't write intangible or human up here, so I apologize for that. So on the financial side, uh, the tangible resources, you can look at a characteristic like borrowing capacity or internal funds generation, right? And some indicators of that would be debt equity ratios, credit ratings, or net cash flows. For physical resources, of course, that's the easy one. Plants and equipments, size and location uh, of technology, or size and location of plant and equipment. You could look at um, the technology available on a plant, uh, the flexibility of use in the plant. You could look at land and buildings, raw materials available. And the indicators of that would be things like market value of fixed assets, the scale of the plants, and alternatives for those fixed assets. On the intangible resources side, you could look at technology. Patents, copyrights, know-how, research and development facilities, uh, technical and scientific employees. And you could look at that, the indicator would be things like the number of patents owned, royalty income, R&D expenditure, R&D staff. Also under intangible, intangible resources, looking at reputation. You can look at things like brands, customer loyalty, company reputation. Um, that could be with regards to suppliers, customers, government, all of your stakeholders. And the indicator of that would be things like brand equity, product price premium, and recognition. And then on the human resources side, you can look at the training, the experience, the adaptability, the commitment, and the loyalty of employees. And the indicator of that would be things like employee com uh, qualifications, pay rates, and turnover. So in our next video, we're going to talk about organizational capabilities. I'm looking forward to seeing you then.